Hi and welcome back, it's Vicky here and today I'm going to showcase a new product that has just been released by Waffle Flower. Now this is called Water Media Mat, it is made out of silicone, it is non-stick, it is waterproof and heat resistant. This is a great mat if you love water coloring and uh, the bag clings nicely on top of your surface so it's not going to move on you. I love that it has this palette for your colors and it is really portable, it's very lightweight and you can roll it or just fold it like I did, nothing is going to happen to it. You can see that I am pressing really hard here and when it opens up it's in perfect condition. Now you can use it with the palette on the left or on the right or even at the top. Another fun part about this uh, silicone mat is that it has some markings at the top and at the bottom as well as at the center which are made especially for those who film videos. So you can see it fits nicely the 16 by 9 ratio on uh, videos as well as there are indentations for square videos for Instagram. So if you want a white background to work on this is the way to go plus it's not reflective. Now this is a silicone mat and it is marketed mainly for water coloring but I'm going to show you that you can do more things than just water coloring on it. So here I'm just using a watercolor brush marker and I'm going to add a little bit on one of those squares. You can mix your colors in there. You can also fill one of those with water and use it to clean your brushes. And the fun part is that everything is contained within those squares so you won't contaminate the colors that you have added close by. You can also take it to the sink and just wash it easily or just use a, a baby wipe to wipe it out. Really easy to clean and I'm going to use a number of different uh, mediums here so you can see how easy it is to clean it up. So the pink one was the Arteza Real Brass, this one was the Stress Ink Reinker, now I'm using the Stress Oxide Ink Reinker. I'm also going to use one of those squares to mix a couple of colors from this palette. You will see I'm going to add tons of mediums here and no matter what I did I wasn't able to stain this palette. However keep in mind that uh, depending on the mediums that you are going to use and the pigment they have it might stain your palette a little bit. I really don't mind if I have a stained palette. After all this is what uh, palettes are for to protect the rest of the area. After all this will mean that your palette is well loved and used. And since we are testing things out, instead of using just watercolor paints, I'm going to use uh, acrylic paint. This is uh, the one by Tim Holtz, it's the Distress Paint. I'm also going to bring in some fluid acrylic paint. And let's try some pastes. This is the Ice Zinc Diamond uh, Paint. It is actually glue with glitter. So I'm adding glue and glitter on top of my mat and I'm going to let this dry. And to make things even messier, I'm going to spread with my spatula some of that acrylic paint. And you can see I can start working on my project normally by picking up colors, cleaning up my brushes. I can use my brush to mix up uh, the colors in a different square. I'm making sure that I spread around all those colors in the squares so that we can see how nice it's going to clean up. I'm also using my heat gun to make sure that the main area is completely dry. Remember that this mat is heat resistant and of course since it is non-stick you can create your very own enamel dots. So I'm going to create some here and let them dry so that you can see how easy it is to peel them off. Now I'm going to try and clean up the palette. For that I'm using just a dry paper towel to pick up all the excess from all those squares. Again this is a paper towel and as you can see I'm able to pick up most of the paint from these squares. The only one that gives me trouble is the red one which is actually the fluid acrylic. But I'm going to go back to it with a, a baby wipe. Now this is a baby wipe. It helps the situation here but uh, it is still stained. But I did find a way to make it completely clean and I'll share it to you later on in this video. Before I clean up the main area I want to show you that uh, this silicone mat works great for uh, the smooshing technique with the Distress inks and I actually use Distress Oxide ink here. So when you spray water over the ink it beats up which is perfect for this technique. It's super easy to wipe off any Distress ink oxide or none 
and uh, all those cubes, the ink cubes that you have, fit perfectly inside those squares so you can create easily your own palettes. And again remember that anything water based is super easy to clean on this palette and here is where I try to clean up the stained one with alcohol and you can see that it completely removed that stain so I'm good to go not only with watercolors but acrylic paints as well. Everything is completely dry on my main area so I'm going to try and peel off things. The enamel dots are really easy to remove, although they are not actually uh, completely dry. They were kind of soft, I didn't wait enough time. And that's why I ended up having some dots on my mat, which are really easy to clean up. Now I'm going to try and remove that glue and glitter, and you can actually peel it off. Super easy to clean. And you can even peel off the acrylic paint, so it's really non-stick which means that you can use any type of glue on top of it, you will be able to peel it off when it's dry, as well as your glue gun. So you can see it's not only for watercoloring, you can use it with other mediums, you don't just wipe them off to remove like watercoloring, but it is really easy to turn your mat into looking like brand new again. So let's make a card using watercoloring, I will be using products by Waffle Flower, I'll be using the speech bubble die that it comes with 10 different dies inside as well as this stamp set which is absolutely adorable it has a bunch of uh, animals that are wishing you happy birthday this is called We Heard and there are also matching dies available I am planning to do some watercoloring today so I will be stamping everything with a permanent ink so I know that it's not going to bleed on me later on and of course I'm working on watercolor paper. To stamp my image I'm using my Misty so that I can stamp it a couple of times to get a good impression since my watercolor paper has some texture. For coloring my image today I will be using my good old Distress inks so I have created a little palette there and you can see the colors that I'm using on the left. For their faces I'm going with tea dye and since I am diluting it with water it goes way lighter which is something that I like. Notice that I don't cover up completely the whole face, I'm only adding color on the left side. With this technique I end up having some highlights on their faces without having to do anything else. And I will repeat the same technique for their bodies. I'm working with pomestone stone here and again I will not cover up the whole body. I am only adding the shadows on the left of the body as well as under the head. For their ears I'm going with a worn lipstick and I'm also going to add some touches of that color for their cheeks. Now here I have created another palette for coloring my balloons and you can see the colors that I used on the left of the screen. Now if you are wondering, the watercolor brush that I'm using is by Arteza. They have uh, watercolor brushes in various sizes and I find that picking up the correct watercolor brush is kind of difficult. Some of them are really difficult to control in terms of uh, the flow of the water. But this one is really nice, it doesn't uh, have too much flow and I can easily control it, so I'm uh, happy with it and I keep using it again and again. Once everything was colored, I used the matching dies to cut out all my images. And now I'm going to create a background for my card. I'm using peacock feathers and I'll just apply a wash of color, mainly concentrating the color at the top which is going to fade out as you go towards the bottom and uh, I'm going actually for an ombre effect. And I did uh, water the whole paper before I started with color which really helps on that uh, washed out look. I have all the parts ready to go for my card, I can now put away my mat, I can either roll it or just fold it. I love how easy it is to store it away or take it with you on the go. I think you will absolutely love it if you are into watercoloring, it is a mat that you will enjoy a lot. I'm going to quickly put my card together, I have added foam tape at the back and I'm also going to secure down three little green strings and that's how he is going to hold the balloons, but of course you can just draw some lines. I'm sticking down the image at the very bottom of my background 
and I have also cut out uh, a speech bubble using the dies. I am going to stick that down and I have the sentiment there that comes from the same stamp set. I'm going to stick it down towards the top and I will use my scissors to cut off the excess. And finally put the balloons in place and the whole panel on a four and a quarter by five and a half standard card. I hope the review was helpful and answered most of your questions. You will find links to everything I used down below in the description area. I hope you had fun and you got inspired. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.